What's up, guys? Kim is here for Meanwhile in the Man Cave. We take a look at all things pop culture, games, toys, or anything we think is cool. And today, we are taking a look at the Todd McFarlane DC Multiverse Anti-Monitor figure. The Anti-Monitor first appeared in Crisis on Infinite Earths number 2 in May of 1985 and was created by Marv Wolfman, George Perez, and Jerry Ordway. The creature called the Monitor was originally created by being known as the Overmonitor to learn more about the multiverse. But being unprepared to deal with the passing of time and how complex life was, uh, the probe was split into two equal opposite beings, the Anti-Monitor and the Monitor. The Monitor representing all positive matter and goodness and the Anti-Monitor representing antimatter and evil. The Anti-Monitor is one of the biggest threats in the DC Universe, responsible for destroying thousands of universes. In fact, he's responsible for more DC deaths than any other villain. The Anti-Monitor has vast amounts of superhuman strength and power and can vary in size from anywhere from 9 feet to hundreds of meters tall. The Anti-Monitor's ability to resurrect himself even after his apparent destruction ensures that he'll be a constant thorn in the DC Universe's side. Okay, starting right off, the normal Todd McFarlane Fair preview of the character. On the back, we got a little artwork right out of uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths here. Love that artwork. And let's stop wasting time on this box and bust the Anti-Monitor out. All right, this is what's in the box. You got your figure stand and the collector's card. And nothing in the package outside the anti-monitor figure. And here he is, the figure himself. Do you like the colors and everything on him? Design is really nice. Honestly, my biggest problem with this figure is the scale. I really wish he could have done at least an 18 inch figure. He does the Batmobiles and he does the bat wings and all that. It would be nice to have a large scale anti-monitor figure. Um, it would just look more appropriate with the other figures. That would have been cool. Could have even done it as a build a figure from uh, like mega figs. You could have had several mega figs with pieces of him and then built him into a, well, an 18 inch scale figure at the end that could have been kind of a cool idea but other than that the figure does look really cool now let's take a look at his articulation um the material too that's another thing i would gotta make a comment on the, the material that this one's made out of um actually feels better than a lot of the uh uh mega figs that mcfarland does he feels pretty solid which is kind of nice so let's start off with his head here you do have some left and right motion. Not a lot, but it does have it. Um, and the head does tilt forward and back. At the shoulders, you've got your lateral movement as well as forward and back. You've got your double elbow joint and you do have the shoulder and bicep joint there, which is nice. At the wrist, you can angle that and just make sure that the um, hinge is lined up on there like you do all the Mark Farland figures. It does have an abdomen joint. Kind of give him a little bit of turreting there as well as a bit of a crunch motion. Quite a substantial amount of articulation on this figure considering it's the anti-monitor. I wouldn't expect him into be, to have him into a mini crazy poses, but he does have the, the ability to do it. Now, the leg, you do have the forward kick, back kick, not so much, and it's restricted by these pants in the back. So, um, you also don't have a joint here, which would have been kind of nice, or even at the knee for, you know, maybe angling that foot. But one thing that does happen up here, you do have a little bit of motion here. See that? So that's kind of nice 
and you have the double knee joint. No, jo no joint at the boot line. Um, the foot does not angle left or right, but it does go forward and back. And unlike most, um, you know, most mega figs he does, you do have a toe joint. So all that articulation should be pretty much the same on the other side. Let's get the anti-monitor into some poses and I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. So I can't quite put my finger on what it is that I'm unsatisfied with this figure. I, I think really it's the scale. I think that's really my main issue with this figure um, when I'm getting him into poses. Um, I know the character can vary in size. I just want a jumbo figure with this action figure. I, I, he just needs to be bigger. The articulation and everything is fine for who he is and everything, but for the scale of this figure in the comic, the scale of the action figure needs to equal that somewhat. Um, that's why he, sh he should have been bigger than probably any other of the uh, McFarlane uh, uh, mega figs that are out there. Either that or he could have maybe included some other, uh, you know, accessories with him, like energy shooting, you know, uh, hands or something. But that's my main problem with this figure. So anyway, um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. And please, if you can, give us a like and subscribe. It does have, help others find our videos. And come back every Tuesday at 9 a.m. for a brand new episode of Meanwhile in the Band Cave. I'll talk to you guys later.